An essential process in all eukaryotic cells is the export of materials from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. And up to now, this has been thought to occur solely uh, via the nuclear pore complex. Thus, ribosomes, tRNAs, and mRNAs are all thought to exit the nucleus via the nuclear pore complex. However, some cells rely on uh, localized translation of RNAs, and often these RNAs seem to be transported in these large granules called transport granules. And if we put this, these transport granules to scale up next to the nuclear pore, you can see that they're much larger than the nuclear pore complex. So an open question has been, where are these granules first assembled? When we started collaborating with Melissa, we were interested in a really central question in neuroscience, which is how synapses are formed and they are modified. And for this, we were using a very powerful genetic model system, which is the fruit fly Drosophila. Uh, in particular, we were uh, using the larva stages of the fly because it's a very convenient system, very simple, uh, in which we can observe synapse development and these synapses are continuously changing. As the muscle grows, the synaptic terminal begins to expand, forming new synaptic buttons. And this is accompanied by a response of the postsynaptic muscle that lays down new postsynaptic apparatus. So an important signal in this process is provided by the secretion of uh, wingless, a uh, wind. Uh, so wingless is secreted by uh, the presynaptic cell and binds to postsynaptic free cell receptor. The receptor itself is endocytose and travels towards the nucleus. In the vicinity of the nucleus, uh, a terminal fragment of the receptor is cleaved and it enters the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, it forms very prominent foci, the free cell 2 foci, that localize to the periphery of the, of the nucleus. Because mutations that affect the free nuclear import pathway uh, has synapses that uh, lack postsynaptic specialization, we thought that this process had something to do with gene expression required to regulate and to synthesize the postsynaptic apparatus. However, when we examined the nuclear defrizzle 2 foci, we found that they were in fact large ribonucleoprotein particles, or RNPs, and that they contain transcripts encoding synaptic proteins. We hypothesize that their function is to traffic to the NMJ where they undergo local translation to build the rapidly growing postsynaptic apparatus. So what was so highly surprising about these studies is that the large frizzled positive RNA granules were utilizing a novel mode of nuclear export which appeared to be independent of the nuclear pores. Instead, it appeared that they were using a mechanism that resembled the egression of herpes simplex virus from the nucleus. So during viral um, infection, what happens is, is that the viral genome is packaged into a capsid inside the nucleus. But this capsid is too large to transverse the nuclear pore. In order to subvert this, the virus will actually bud into the paranuclear space, leaving it encapsulated by the inner nuclear membrane. This encapsulated viral capsid can then fuse with the outer nuclear membrane and be released into the cytoplasm. Notably, this process was dependent on the nuclear lamin protein, LAMC, which is an A-type lamin, which is associated with a host of human disorders, including a number of muscular dystrophies. Interestingly, the frizzle 2 c RNPs utilize some of the same cellular machinery as viral capsids during the nuclear budding process. Nuclear capsids initiate nuclear budding process by recruiting viral proteins, as well as cellular proteins such as protein kinase C, to phosphorylate lamins, which allows them to bud into the perinuclear space. Similarly, we found that an atypical protein kinase C, likely through the phosphorylation of A-type lamin, was required for the budding process. The findings in this paper fundamentally change our understanding of mRNA export. In addition to the canonical pathway of mRNA export going through the nuclear pore complex, we now know that large RNA transport granules can be assembled in the nucleus and exit the, the nucleus via a budding mechanism akin to herpes viruses. These studies are very important in multiple ways. First of all, they uh, unravel a novel mechanism by which uh, signals are communicated between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Second, they provide an entry point into many diseases that affect uh, the nuclear envelope. Uh, and of course, uh, viral infections such as herpes, uh, shingles, for example. Uh, finally, from the neurobiological perspective, uh, they really uh, provide information on how uh, RNAs are packaged for the polarized synthesis of the postsynaptic apparatus.